Then Tracy Morgan goes out and does something, and it ends up being a whole thing. Like, wh how does that happen? Which, why doesn't it happen to one person but another? Tracy well, Morgan's a stupid. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Tony, shut the fuck up. <laughs> oh, yeah. God. Um, Paul. Yes, yeah, sir. It's going great. <laughs> Colin Quinn, because he was on Saturday Night Live, I have no, I have and no with problem Tracy with Morgan, right. how, how did you feel? Should he apologized or not? Do you think that? Well, like you said, he was a stupid. Listen, I don't want. <laughs> I couldn't resist. <laughs> Football de table, en face de la um, piscine. Uh, I oh, I, I didn't like know the show was going to be in French, dude. I, I dude, didn't know it's that. the weirdest thing to have a whole fucking room laughing at shit I can't comprehend. <laughs> have you not seen Dane Cook? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know the guy, I just knew the reference. Did you ever think that when we were young, you know, back when we were alive, that we would like be going, uh, we would be going to the fucking I airport and see, see the army off. guys with like guns and excited. badges and shit like this fucking so Nazi that's... Germany. Did you ever think it was going to be like that? Well, of course I didn't. Did, are, you, are you telling me? Okay. <laughs> no, I didn't think that. Hey, Bob, Bob, uh, say something <laughs> attached to what the fuck they just said. <laughs> All right. Okay. What can come out your ass after that? Let's figure it out. <laughs> Some chewing gum, nigga. What, what's coming out your ass, bud? You're throwing this. Will you fucking? <laughs> I have never. I, I'm just confused because you know. I, first, let, me let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. With Obama becoming president, do you think that changes the the racial situation in America? Do you think it's changed at all? You mean it's me? one more of them employed. <laughs> <laughs> Shit like that, you don't bust his balls. No, Every time he does a Negro no, joke, it's okay. I'm I do. Foreign. I don't know better. No, it doesn't. <laughs> I know better. I know better. No, because no. What happens is it doesn't. It doesn't matter because the youth. They got on that internet. They put Obama in office. Right. They woke but, everybody but up. It's mostly the white youth, because a lot of black guys no, under no, 25 no, no, no. are convicted no, no. felons and they can't no, vote. No, 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 and no. you got to remember. Did you picture your career this way when you started out? Is it like what you wanted? Not here. No, I didn't <laughs> <laughs> you know, my goal was to do stand-up. I just loved doing stand-up. I was making a living doing stand-up. I did The Tonight Show with Johnny. I did the HBO. I did the Young Comedian Special with this guy 17 years ago. And it was the Young Comedian Special, and I was kind of old then. Yeah. I was, uh, yeah. I noticed that. I was like 35. I, I, uh, yeah. I remember at the time just thinking, Ray is so much better than all of us. Uh, I remember seeing your stand-up and thinking, that guy's going to be a great writer. <laughs> <laughs> I got a question. Bells, now, I, I remember seeing you at the tail end in the New York comedy scene, late 80s, when it was fun, I bet. It was probably like a blast. 70s. Fuck it, 70s, 80s, whatever. Yeah. All right, I don't no have the age, exact year. No Sorry. age, Coke spoons around Am I Ken neck. Burns? I don't know when it was, all right? <laughs> Either way. You see how he lures you in? It's beautiful. Yeah, no, but go ahead, I'm sorry. Both of you guys were having a ball. Now comedy is like it's all this self-promotion and, you know, whatever. You gotta wear a funny hat, you gotta wear a jacket. It's just a lot of work. <laughs> it sucks. It does, it sucks. No, it's really changed, right? Yeah. We never, we never had to deal with merch. Yeah. What's merch? Yeah. See, he doesn't even know what it is. Sounds fun. <laughs> merch. I yeah, bought your merch, fucking yeah. how to do comedy book when I started ah. out. All right, you don't know what merch is? Yeah, man. I, I read that thing. Me too. It took me five, six years to overcome that. Ah. <laughs> ah. Oh. Oh. The masters take. I'm not down. I'm not down. I'm not down. Whenever I perform a show in front of my people, 
I who, who bomb. Are your people? Who are your people? Pakistanis. Why do you think that, that you don't do well? Or is it just in your mind that you don't do well? No, I know I don't do well because they called and complained to my manager afterwards. <laughs> really? Really? Mu what Muslims? I did a show for a Muslim Doctors Association. And, well, uh, here or in Pakistan? He, here. Oh, because what in kind of. In Pakistan, it would just be called Doctors Association. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want them to nobody, throw her out. Nobody, no matter even how much you might like Sarah Palin, can actually envision a positive joke about Sarah Palin. <laughs> I made the decision after she was nominated and I heard her speak the first couple of times after a couple of weeks, and I knew she was like, for me, a, the, a mother load. <laughs> but I was so shocked that she was running. It, it stunned me so much. I said on stage, I wouldn't make jokes about her because I could not live in this world if I believed she was a real person. <laughs> and so I have, for, uh, for the entire time that she's been around, treated her as a hallucination. <laughs> I did a joke one night and, he, and he, he, he got offended. It was weird, it was during the O.J. Simpson thing, you know? Yeah. And, and I said something about the jury thought that DNA meant that Niggers acquitted. <laughs> and Can I say something? he got up. Can I like say something? <laughs> <laughs> Down right, ladies I've been and gentlemen. I'm laughing my ass off. When y'all edit this, don't make it look like I was cooning up, cause this is some funny <laughs> shit. <laughs> I saw the camera, and when he said that niggas acquitted, the camera went straight to me. Yeah! <laughs> uh, <laughs> and it's like, I don't want y'all to edit this to make it look like, it's all right, that niggas laughing. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, so go ahead and laugh. It's funny as shit. I love y'all talking about this, so just laugh, man. This shit is funny, man. That's all I'm saying. Sweet. Hey, Paul, Paul, do me a favor. Make sure you edit all that shit out and just put, <laughs> put, a, put a subtitle that says, that nigger's cooning. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, I went to, I was watching Def Jam, and this comic opened up with, bitches ain't shit. And I was like, wow. Let's be honest, they ain't shit. I mean. Yeah, Fair but enough. if you really got underneath Fair what enough. he was saying, he was probably just afraid to get into a relationship. You know? I know. Just layers. <laughs> I think stand-ups are the person in the room. We almost get up and articulate what maybe the room is thinking or, or hoping or an idea that they hadn't thought of. It's like well, we're very real, we're very, we have to be very rooted, which is the trouble if you get successful because you suddenly lose totally. a, a connection with, with people. I don't think that would affect my act in one... one. No, because... <laughs> why, why it wouldn't affect your act? Why? I said, <laughs> I said, because people will always rape. <laughs> I have a bit for you that I want to tell you because I've never been able to use it because it just doesn't suit my act. Oh, great, okay, go on. I want to give you a joke. Yeah, done. Thanks. I'm not going to do it now. Do it now! <laughs> do it now, yeah. Just, uh, I have to get this with, I with know, comics people do it to me. In, yeah. in Montreal or at Edinburgh. Yeah, they when you're around it. comics, they come, up, they come up, they say, listen, can... I... Uh, I wrote this joke about, uh, about raping a baby. <laughs> I can't tell that joke. But, but maybe you, you could. Can. And you go, have you seen my act? It's not that bad. What is it? The last what, 15 minutes. What is, it, what is the most offensive joke that you've ever written? The, if only Africa had more mosquito nets, then every year we could save millions of mosquitoes from dying needlessly of AIDS. <laughs> Were you not hopeful that there would be change with Obama in office? That we love magic, man. We don't like talking reality. That's why I never really fell for the whole thing. Mm -hmm. We like ma That's why people think ancient dishwashers have predicted the end of the world in 2012, man. I don't believe in that. <laughs> ancient dishwashers. The apocalypto goofy little short dude. I don't, I don't believe in it. <laughs> you feel this, though? You feel this. It's just like, ooh, because I said ancient dishwashers. But let's be honest, that's some funny shit. But it, it, 
but Maya. predicted the end of the world. Where Bob, you got a fucking joke about something about the end of the world, nigga? Um, jump in, Roseanne. <laughs> I don't know. I hate hope. <laughs> <laughs> and I got on the first public transportation, and I told the white people, get in the back where you fucking belong. <laughs> Obama is president! Hey, speaking of the bus, let me ask you this. How come people died so that black people could sit wherever they wanted on the bus, and now black people all go and sit in the back of the bus? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Why, why is that? Because the same... Because they don't learn, Paul. The same reason... No, <laughs> the same... I am, yeah, <laughs> I'm of the, uh, the younger generation, so I just wonder for all of you, uh, who you just... are you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now you can talk. <laughs> it's so good. It's, it, it's so good because... It's so mutual. Like, we all know what porn's uh, illegal, like uh, kitty porn or coma porn or <laughs> kitty coma porn. That's the worst one. Coma porn is illegal? <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was making the best of a bad situation. I don't know. Home of porn. Without health care, you gotta make a living, am I right? Terry Shiva was asking for it by the way she was dressed. <laughs> Did you start doing comedy there or here? No, no. here. Well, stand up over there, when I was there, was like 20 years behind. So it was like very, or 30 years behind. It was like very different, like Catskills kind of. Catskills in, the, in Pakistan? Yeah. That... It's a fascinating <laughs> world. Take my wives, please. <laughs> These kids, they blow up so young. <laughs> That's easy. I know, it's all right. I'm right here, guys. I can Thanks. hear. <laughs> Plus, I would never be one of those people. I don't care who's in charge. I still, maybe this is like my Missouri hillbilly side. I still do respect the office. So what? The president of Germany was. Uh, you have to respect the office, even when Hitler. Was if you're in? German. Well, yeah. If you're German. <laughs> what about but the Germans I, who said no? I don't. I don't respect it. That's wrong. That's not what Germany is. Really, you don't speak. Really, we go, well, Aren't they the good gonna, guys? We're gonna go down. Really, you know, Lou knows. There's nothing you can talk about World War II and the Germans that I don't know. This could be another 18 you're... hours. Seriously? <laughs> oh, yes, yeah. I just got the whole Nazi thing they advertise on TV. Unseen footage. Oh! Uh, I mean, here he is at the Wolf Slayer. What? I never <laughs> saw this shit! What? 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 And now they've got interviews because the people are old enough in Germany. They finally have said, they finally, I think they think, fuck it, we're gonna die, so they're being honest. And now there's all these old Germans going, well, we were not telling the truth. We kind of thought he was awesome. We did. We were all in, all in. We didn't like the Jews. We were sad about being German. He made us happy about being German. It was all great till it got weird. <laughs> I, I had uh, one of the few letters written when I was uh, performing at the comedy store upset at me because uh, I had this bit that I was doing about, uh, there's a thing called the Second Coming Project, where people had theorized if the blood from the Shroud of Turin was actually Jesus' blood, we could somehow or another clone Jesus. And so I had this bit that I was doing about Nothing Jesus Nothing could possibly go wrong there. Cloning, the very first time you clone, it's not always exact science. Like Dolly the Sheep, they had to go through a bunch of dollies before they got the good one. You know, I'm like, if Jesus comes back retarded, like, do we still follow him? Like, what do we do? <laughs> So I had this whole thing about how he went, instead of turning water into wine, he turned like dog shit into cookies, and, and, and everybody would just follow him around. And I was doing this bit, man, and this fucking lady said, next subject, next subject. She was like directing me. Okay, you gotta tell you, like, that word, it can mean other things. It just can be ball breaking anytime you play sport. I was playing hockey the other day, okay? And this guy, he knocked me down, I felt stupid, I got up, he asked me, he goes, he goes, you all right? And I go, yeah, you faggot. Like, it was this oddly intimate moment. 
He was going, are you okay? And we were on the ice, and I, it made me uncomfortable. And I said, hey, you faggot, get away from me. She so wants to believe that like, you're like, fucking skating around with your buddy on the ice, figure skating, and we're supposed to believe you're Mr. Fucking Mom. You see what he's doing now? He's using, like, homophobia. Hey, you're twirling out there in your dress. Hey, you're twirling out there in your yeah, little skates. That's what guys do. What about George Collins' great routine? What's that? He goes, when he's growing up, a, a fag was a guy that wouldn't go downtown with you and beat up the queers. <laughs> Just go home, fag. <laughs> Jimmy has a book coming out. You have a theory about why we even have comedy. It's a little bit pretentious. Are you sure you want to hear it? Because it's pretentious. I assume okay, so I was trying to think about why actually, why do we laugh? And I think, you know, the last couple of hundred years, what? Do we still have to buy the book? <laughs> We release endorphins when we laugh. And the endorphins. reason people come to comedy shows is, is to, it, they, there's a release of endorphins and you're, you're happy. So is laughter the opposite of what we're doing right now? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I don't know. Is that what it is? I don't, I'm fucking lost. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. Speaking of uh, women taking risks. Yeah, I got in a little bit of trouble for that, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And she looks like Hitler in a picture. <laughs> I don't I look like Hitler? Just like Hitler, like you have his face. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Check out my fucking Hitler shit. It's, uh, it's Hitler. These are little gingerbread Jews, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. It's like a Jewish woman, and she's dressed up like Hitler. And, um, you know, he's in drag, Hitler. <laughs> And he's baking cookies, and he's really proud of them, but also, he's looking off into the horizon because he has a dream. <laughs> Jews went crazy over this, understandably. Yeah, and they, I don't see understandably. I'm like, I'm, it really pissed me off because they're like, you're making fun of the, the people in the ovens. Well, I'm not making fun of the people You kind of are, though. I kind of am not. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest here. Only that. thing would have been worse if you made the cookies skinny. <laughs> wow. No, that's so not right. I was gonna tell you a story about Richard, which she doesn't even know. Uh-oh. Oh, really? Yeah, she was a baby. I mean, baby, baby. And Richard and her mother were having fights. And I used to call the house they lived in, literally around the corner for me, the House of Pain. <laughs> and so they had got into a battle, and her mother brought the baby to me. And I kept Rain for about Aww. three days. And she was a baby baby. She doesn't even know that. That story's really funny, Paul. Thank you. Really good. No, 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 no. No, no. No, no. That, that was a serious. That was a serious. No, all the white folks laugh. That's good. When you, and you're, you're, well, now, you're, wait a minute. Now, because, how did that become no. racist? <laughs> because how the did, fuck did that become racist? Because they did. Because they all laughed. But, but, no. And when did, he you saw, laugh? when he was, did you laugh when he said that was funny, Paul? Did you laugh? Yeah, that was funny. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> so when I first met Bo, I asked him who his favorite comic is, and he said Hans Tewen. <laughs> Exactly, he's a Dutch comedian. And when I met you, you were nine? <laughs> I can't really talk about it because of the restraining order, but I was just blown away that you would even know who he was. Wait, what's his name? Hans Taylor. Can you do a little bit of this thing? Uh, he's a Dutch absurdist. Uh, one of the things he does is uh, he brings out a, a sock puppet, which is a black sock. See, already I don't like him. Yeah, no. <laughs> all right, all right, it's a, it's a white sock. Oh, and better. then uh, <laughs> he, uh, uh, Speaking of porn, I'm in a hotel room in the 80s on the road, and my wife's movie was on the pay cable. So I'm one of the few men who has pleasured himself watching his own wife wow. on television. I think most of us have jerked off to Belzer's wife. Ah, oh, come on. Oh, oh no, oh, you oh, did. I asked for it. No, that was a compliment. I dream about my wife. So. But you were taught specifically that Jews are evil. Yeah, in school, yeah. Our, our history books were definitely all the original Muslim wars that we studied history were all against, and then the Jews came. And I remember there was a test. They asked us this question. It was a trick question. How many people were martyred in the war? And somebody was like, 3,000. Like, nope, 1,500 of those were Jews, so they're going to hell. 
And this was like in sixth grade or something. So, so now it's probably a higher number. I hope so. We've been working pretty hard. <laughs> We've been going at it. You are, in fact, an alcoholic, right? I only uh, drink when I work, which me and I'm a workaholic. <laughs> I was so excited that you were in a movie and I was bummed that it turned out to be this one. In his attempt to shut down the paraphernalia industry and send a message to Hollywood, John Ashcroft made an example out of Tommy, proving that even a rich movie star is not untouchable for the DEA. The privatized prison business is, is big. It's a slave labor market. We get these little jobs and we work, we get like $15 a month, low end. People that are doing the longest time here are the ones that had a strategy that went to court and fought it and lost. I'll tell you what it did. It, it made me feel like a black guy. <laughs> wow. Whether he said something offensive or not, I just thought it was fucked up that one guy went home, like with, I guess, the greatest memory ever, like a stenographer, and typed it out, and everybody's like, that's what he said, and that's what he meant, because guy in seat number 5F said it. And next thing you know, he's going around, got to apologize. That's kind of a scary thing as a comedian. Well, I've seen it wasn't Tracy's funny. act, like, his show is crazy. It His is show pretty crazy, is pretty yeah. over the top. Tracy's genuinely So out of it's, his it's mind, not though. like he's up there, like, what's up with end tables? And then goes into that <laughs> shit. And that's when it comes to me, where you're doing like this selective getting offended. Who is determining how somebody's intent is? Who is to determine, hey, you know, the way you said that was mean spirited? I know a lot of fucking idiots that think a lot of shit is mean spirited just because it goes against what they believe. Everything is subjective to each audience. So you can say one thing in front of one audience, say the same thing, and those people are offended because it offends them. Just like me, the shit that offends me. But it's like, I can't make those determinations. What offends you? All right, this is a bad example, but... Um... <laughs> <laughs> That's just the Canadian touch they put in there. Right. Does, the, uh, does the, the Montreal, the little mascot, does that look like if you ask a redneck to describe a Jew? Like, is it... <laughs> <laughs> Like, well, little green guy with a pointy nose and horns. Like, that feels weird. The whole issue with the uh, TSA and all that bullshit security, which is a fucking puppet show, let's be honest. Here's my problem with that whole thing. A fat black bitch that is at the motherfucking gate, right? I mean, Patrice, she's can awful. you name, uh, just say her name. It, it has to be Tamika. Yeah. And don't, and don't try to set me up to do your white heel yeah, for you, nigga. I, I, I feel you, Bob. I want Here's to the problem. Her. I'm gonna call her. Right. As, as a society, right, what we do with pedophiles is we excuse some, we don't excuse others, right? So Elvis Presley had Priscilla Presley move into his house at 14 years of age, and he became a legal guardian. He fucked her until she was 16, then he married her. And Charlie Chaplin impregnated a 15-year-old. Yet no one says anything because they were the best in their field, right? You're never going to get another king of rock and roll and you'll never get a better silent movie star, right? All I'm saying is, how talented do you have to be to fuck a kid? At what stage do we as a society go, but he was good, right? See? My favorite, would you do Art is Dead? Yeah. Because I think that song says everything that I think I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, I'll do that one, yeah. Yeah, sure. Woo! Oh, he's a, he's a prop comic. <laughs> <laughs>
Good pun, too. Yeah. Good pun. Cleric. I met him at a gig. We had the same manager at the time. He goes, oh, I'm going to send this young guy up to uh, open for you. up." So he and his wife come in, in the green room. They're talking about how they're living in their car. And I thought, well, if I was this girl, <laughs> this guy better be really fucking funny <laughs> or really good in bed. Because who the fuck would live in a car with an opening act? I mean, maybe, maybe. <laughs> with a feature and a middle, a good, a high paid middle, 700 and air, maybe. It's an interesting point you bring up though about talking to young people because in the 70s, you worked colleges like crazy. You work colleges now and there's a long list of things that you're not supposed to talk about. Really? On the top of the list is drugs. Really? I do tons of colleges and they'll give you a list of like, they're like, don't talk about drugs, don't talk about sex, don't talk about religion. Don't so what do you do, go home, you and pack And I'm like, leave. I have fucking nothing. And so I'm, I'm Billy the Mime on stage. Uh, <laughs> do it, do, I don't know what to say. We did an all girls school and uh, <laughs> uh, we were about two seconds into our act and they got up and <laughs> filed out like a, like a fire drill. <laughs> 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 And I was just saying, hey, wait, you're going to miss the part where I fuck him in the ass. Man. <laughs> oh. Man. Hey, do you remember the show, um, oh, it's like the demise of Western civilization. Tough crowd? No. Um. <laughs> you motherfucker. You motherfucker. <laughs> Did you get the prior, you know, are you, do you hate white people? <laughs> no, but I slept with them. Uh, <laughs> 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 Why wouldn't you sleep with us? I don't care. <laughs> it's an easier fit. <laughs> it's an easier fit. Like if I was going to be raped, I want Bobby over Paul. <laughs> 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 And b believe me, that's how I got on the show. So. <laughs> what, if I, I, what do you mean if you, if you have to get raped, you have to get raped by me than by Moody? Because you'd have a smaller cock, it was a big dick joke. Everyone else got it straight off the bat, Bobby, but thanks for joining me. <laughs> <laughs> With all due respect, as a friend, my suggestion, I have three daughters. Uh, you want you trying to fix them up? No, I'm suggesting. <laughs> wow, man, you really are cool. <laughs> I knew this was going to go there. <laughs> what I'm telling you is you got to get outside yourself. Everybody has to get out of the narcissistic, and I'm a right, big narcissist. Right. What I'm suggesting to you is have a child. First thing, it's, <laughs> it's seven true. minutes. But a child will give you a projection you mean, outside. Seven minutes. Minute, seven minutes of material, immediately. Oh, okay. But, but... <laughs> it's right. panel. It's... it's... <laughs> what, you, what, what you need to do, though, is get outside yourself. They do bring Congratulations, you... Congratulations, Mr. Saget. It's they a tight you. 20. <laughs> <laughs> don't, say, don't say tight about my child. Oh, but, okay. but I'm saying if you get out of yourself and not make it about you and have a, a, a kid is a thing that does give you hope. Bob, I, have, I, have I, noble, I understand what you're saying, but it uh, also makes people. you go when they go, Patrice, you want to do Celebrity Fit Club? If I have a kid, I go, yes. If I don't have a kid, I go, nah. Yeah. By Celebrity Fit Club, <laughs> Patrice means full house. <laughs> See, that's the problem, like, you know, animal rescue and stuff like that. Now, this is really inappropriate, so you guys can groan if you want, but, like, are you involved in anim animal rescue? You are. All right, well, let me just say this. We've rescued more animals than Jews during the Holocaust. Now, it's a true fact. It's a true fact. It's wrong, but it's true. A lot of the crowd are thinking, maybe if the Jews were more helpful and could find bombs and, you know, predict earthquakes, like, dogs, they would have lived. That's, that's where I was going. <laughs> Paul, what do you think? That would have been one of the cutest trainfuls of puppies, though. I'm right! <laughs> I could put a puppy on a train, that's just wrong. <laughs> Even the dog liked it. Look at him, that Jew-hating motherfucker. <laughs> I mean, it's one thing for a heckler to have to heckle you on stage and own that moment, but when people are faceless and don't have to get the repercussions for that, What's they're What's the worst uh, they're thing horrible. they've said about you? Uh, the first comment I ever got was, uh, when I was 15, it was, go, go, gadget, faggot. <laughs> That's all it was. Well, all right, wait a second. Wait, that, that seems supportive. I know. 
When I... and, and honestly, I meant it as supportive. <laughs> <laughs> in the South and in the Midwest, like even though like I am overtly political, like I've had like some of my like best audiences ever because they're not as like apathetic as like New York or LA would be, you know? But when I went to do the morning radio, it was this right wing country station that they wanted me to do. And so we're going up and the owner of the club goes, yeah, when you go on this station, just do the Jew jokes. And <laughs> he's like, they love anti-Semitic stuff. <laughs> But then I'm like, this guy's just exaggerating. And he takes me aside and he does like the, the comedy club owner thing where they've been around forever. And he's like, let me tell you something, kid. Lisa Lampanelli came to this city. She was talking about the blacks. She was talking about the Mexicans. And we were standing right here and I said, Lisa, you go on that station and you talk about the Jews. <laughs> and Lisa said, but I've never talked about the Jews. And he goes, Lisa, get in there like a fucking Little League coach, get in there <laughs> and you talk about those dirty fucking Jews. And I think for, for Middle Easterners, the good thing about 9-11, <laughs> other than all the Jews dying, was oh. that... The guy, thank you. How is it, dude? <laughs> Well, let's try this. Fuck you. Don't, 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 I don't, I, what? I don't want hepatitis, Bobby, Bobby. <laughs> I'm drinking from this side. Oh, yeah. It's not like it went like this. <laughs> uh, no, no. <laughs> now, now it's gonna taste like your wife's cunt. Uh, uh, actually, actually, hold on, hold on, hold on. Ron Jeremy's dick. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got banned from NYU, just so you know I do colleges. Yeah, I imitated a clitoris. <laughs> I, I, I wasn't even trying. I wasn't even trying. I was like, this is not, nothing. And, and there was a debate between like the le lesbian jocks. There was a whole contingency. And they're like, that's wrong, that's wrong. Yo, yo, that's wrong, that's wrong. Like that. In their Abercrombie su su sweaters, I was like, God, you guys are young. You're fucking 18, 19 years old. And you're offended. You're 19. <laughs> you know, you're looking for the quit. What's the fucking difference between a Jew and Santa Claus? <laughs> Santa Claus comes down the chimney. <laughs> <laughs> now, I could say that because I had a fucking oh. relative. I had a fucking relative who died in Auschwitz. There we go. Okay, that's why I could say this. This gives me the fucking right to say it because I had a fucking relative who died in Auschwitz. Apparently the wrong one. <laughs> I won't fucking do it. I won't touch me. <laughs> Get your fucking hand. Hey, hey, man. Don't fuck whoa, with me. Whoa, whoa, what the fuck? Whoa. Hey, hey, hey. I got one thing to say. Yeah? I got one thing to say. Can I say one thing? Live from New York. <laughs> One thing to say. Yeah. If I made one person happy, it's all been worth it. <laughs> I love that. I love being able to say anything I want. Mm -hmm. I had to learn to stop caring about people not yeah. laughing. Because the, the idea of comedy, really, is not everybody should be laughing. Right. It should be about 50 people laughing and 50 people horrified. Right. <laughs> You know what I mean? It's supposed to be people that get it and people that don't get it. It's very hard to watch someone that funny, that young, when you think of how unfunny you were at 20 years old. All I did at 20 is worry about my hair, I think. Yeah, that's a dead end. <laughs> <laughs> What's the punishment for intercourse? Is there a punishment? You get stoned to death. Really? Like Ron Jeremy right now. <laughs> Ron Jeremy's cock is so big it has an elbow. <laughs> his, uh, his cock is so big, Muslims are flying planes into it. <laughs> no? Too soon! I wish there was someone I really didn't like on this show. Me? I'm just using you as a default. <laughs> oh, you used to use me as a punchline. 
Yes, I did. Give us some Paul Provenza punchline. Well, no, just, no, I used him I, as an example of bad 80s comedy. Oh. <laughs> well, I didn't know him. At the, at the end of the 80s, there were so many, just every fucking comic that you knew their name, but you didn't know why, and they all kind of... So I used Paul Provenza as a, Only guess, because it was an alliteration, PP. It wasn't him yeah. personally. Right. It was a funny right. name. But he was one of those. So you could have said like uh, Alan Havy or. No, or, Havy's uh, great. Provenza you know. people knew. <laughs> <laughs> Havy's amazing. I love Havy. Yeah, Havy's a fucking genius. It actually struck me as funny, and I thought it would be a great bit because the bit is actually two straight guys. You can't have that fucking moment. Of like, yeah, you know, I was worried about you. Right, right. You, were, like, I, you can't I, I, have it. You get all weird. Like, dude, yeah, get the fuck away from me. Like, it, it, you're just not allowed to have that moment. So right, in the know, bit, but, but it has nothing to do with gay people. But they, but then that, that knee-jerk reaction is, oh, you said that word. Let's look it up on the chart. Oh, that means this and it means that. And now you have to go on TV because on the chart it means you meant that when you said it. It's, but it's, when you, but when you did that bit, it was really criticizing yourself for not being able to accept some sensitivity yeah, from another guy. Is, th that's why guys. Drop dead at like 50 from like 40 years and not being able to admit a puppy's cute. You just got to keep pushing it down. Oh, no, I fucking care. And, and it's actually, it's a, it's a weakness. The political correctness thing took over. Right. And now, and now political correctness, which is a well-intended, meaningful effort to include and to, and to not just casually accept things that we had casually accepted for generations, has been bastardized into some Orwellian sort of it's just to shut people up i mean the left loves to censor people and shut them up the left and the right they're the same fucking thing yeah, I mean, exactly, it, was like, exactly. it was like years ago <laughs> when i first started performing and all these like lesbian feminists in seattle like surrounded me like i, I thought they were gonna like scalp me fuck that's hot because i was wearing because <laughs> i was wearing a, i was wearing back. a fucking yeah. skirt and they said do you know what you're doing to the feminist movement <laughs> yeah i said yeah hopefully feminizing it <laughs> <laughs> He hugged me once, my father, and it was, I was about 20, and it felt very awkward. And I know now what made it awkward, uh, the nudity. <laughs> <laughs> well, how old were you? When I started stand-up, I was 14. Wow. wow. And I just was like, I can't be a child anymore. Well, I guess I'm... it beats factory work. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> It's a different kind of sweatshop. A different kind of sweatshop. You know, exactly. it's a kind, it's kinder, gentler sweatshop. Did your dad hate white people? No. My dad loved white women, <laughs> and they killed him. So. <laughs> oh, oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Get into detail about that. Who? Which Buy my book. Names? It's along with Mackenzie Phillips. No. <laughs> uh, do you believe it? Do I believe Mackenzie Phillips? I'd have done her if I were her dad. <laughs> Woody Allen married his. Woody yeah. Allen married yeah. his. Some people right. grow their own weed. He was growing his own yeah. pussy. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that too, watching like when you, I would watch Def Jam. And yeah, if it was yeah. a generic white voice, it would annoy me. But if it was a specific white voice, like you could picture the guy, yeah. and then, then you'd be like, that shit actually happened. Yeah. That's funny. But if it was just like, oh, I'm sitting in a chair. Oh. Well, yeah. I, I hated that. But like... Uh... As you got more successful, did you, did you feel like you got better or did you get more insecure? I'm out of this one, right? Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, you're, you're out of it, but, but, but pay attention. Okay, okay. <laughs> I do think a lot of these stereotypes can come from good places. It's people trying to relate to you. Like, I got married to a white girl from North Carolina, and for the first year, her family called me Borat. <laughs> That's what they called me. Was that a term of affection, at least? I honestly do think it was. It was... The, the movie hadn't even come out yet. I they mean, were way great. ahead of the curve. <laughs> they were like, this movie's gonna be big. <laughs> it's like not even the right landmass, you know? Actually, one of the stars of the show... Can I get a, another one, too? Yeah. Thank, you. Okay. Thank you. I didn't know you had, like, uh, the Kings of Leon doing the bottle service. <laughs> <laughs> this is a hip show, dude. How hip can you be? Oh. Anyway. 
I, one time I was on stage doing my Asian bit. Everybody's laughing, having a good time. <laughs> Gotta get paid, I guess. <laughs> Bitch, better have my money. <laughs> Bitches ain't shit. <laughs> Rain Fire is sitting next to Kelly Carlin. <laughs> and, can I just take a moment? I gotta share this uh, with you guys because uh, doing this, having all you guys and friends who've been on this show over the past few nights has just been uh, really riveting. I don't riveting. think we should do blow right Yeah, here. no, you wanna hear this. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly comes up to me and she puts her hand, hand in mine like that, like that. You feel that? You know, and I'm like, what the fuck is that? And she goes, this belonged to my dad and I want you to have it. And this is um, George Carlin's jester pin. Oh my God. Wow. Oh my God. I cried like a little prison bitch. <laughs> he did. Put it in appropriately. I put it in the bag. I put my weed in. <laughs> I felt that would be an homage. <laughs> and the crucifix. And I, I think I'm going to pierce my cock with it. I think that would be good. <laughs> it's a bath bomb. It's a bath bomb. <laughs> good thing you didn't turn a touching speech into something cheap at the end there. <laughs> Not the way you were able to preserve it. I'll never forget this. I'm going to do it with my cock and the thing and the bone. And the... 